fancy some of the latest technology in turning centres? Well, here at ETG, we have the Nakamura Tomy WT152. Tell me about this machine, Paul. Well, this is actually the second generation of the WT150. Um, before I started thinking about this machine, I thought it would be good to maybe look at some of the history behind Nakamura because we, we come here a lot and talk about the technology that they offer. We see a lot of these machines in the field. In fact, there's thousands of these machines installed around the world. But Nakamura was actually formed back in the late 1940s as a company. So it's got a lot of heritage. And in fact, they developed their first machine around about the, the mid 50s. But the, the first generation of their twin turret machines was actually the mid 70s. So, really? That so, early? Yeah. yeah so we we're talking about a, a company here that's got um, the experience and the understanding of developing twin turret, twin spindle turning since in the 1970s, which, yeah. you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but my mathematics tells me that's over 30 years of, uh, in fact, probably almost 40 yeah, I was gonna of say, developing technology like this. Yeah. So uh, what's the USP on this machine? I think w with this machine, you've got two turrets and you've got two spindles. So what you can do is you can essentially look at uh, drawing a line, a diagonal line between those two turrets and you're looking at fundamentally two machines that can do operations simultaneously. So this is where companies that are looking for the things like the unmanned run that we're going to talk about, um, you know, they want, they want operators to be doing other things and not having to set machines. This machine is an ideal um, workhorse to continually run and not necessarily just on those high volumes as well. But so let, let's let's talk about how this works. You bar feed in your billet in, you say about working simultaneously. So what's the benefits of that? So the benefits are that whatever is happening on the front spindle is being machined maybe with the, the top turret and then the second spindle, the bottom turret is then machining the component in the second spindle. So if you've got two operations on a part You've got the first operation and the second, you're doing them both at the same time. And you're getting that part off in one hit. Yeah, and, and essentially in half the time, if you balance it correctly, because you're doing them at the same time. And is this a solid turning centre? Because that's what people want to know. Is it rigid? Is it got the accuracy that everyone desires now? Yeah, and a lot of that comes into the, into the software and the control. But of course, you, you start with the foundations from the ground up. I think having been built these machines for 40 years, there'll be a bit, have been a lot of things that they've learned in order to make uh, the machines cut to tolerance in the morning, in the afternoon, at night, at the weekend, mm. continuously. Now, um, they are all built in Japan, so they're a Japanese machine, and that, again, speaks volumes when it comes to um, the, the development of a product. A lot of the aspects that you talk about in uh, you know, the accuracy and maintaining performance come from the software as well, and this is the Nakamura NT um, smart control and there's just a few features in here which are unique to Nakamura and one of which is their uh, their NT their nurse software which essentially does things like completely monitors the performance of the machine well I know that they monitor because if you've got you haven't got um the machine probing during the run, what it's built into the so the it's system? offsetting. So what, what what's happening here is you've got your tool setter um, positioned into the machine. The now probe. some machine tool manufacturers, yeah, have the probes. They're fixed in there, yeah. and during cycle, if they want to keep an eye on the tool wear, they'll go in and measure the tool during cycle. But of course, if you do that, you're almost defeating the object sometimes of keeping the machine running. And yeah. if you imagine that you want to keep this machine going 24 hours a day, but every hour you're having to stop the cycle check the tools mm. then that's going to cost you time so Nakamura do it differently essentially what they do is you put your tool setter in at the start of the process yeah. measure all the tools that information is fed into the control and then throughout the production cycles the software is identifying what the tool loads are on yeah. on the on the cutting of the it's component compensating and, throughout. Then, and then it's compensating into the control and altering the offsets as it goes so you don't have any tool setting throughout the process what you might notice is that the offsets are changing quite frequently but the beauty of it is yeah there's no there's no downtime exactly it's amazing that that's all built into the software and i know with this and the screen and everything it's all kind of very um, you know, advanced, shall we say. But there's, there's a few things on there, so it will send an alarm out, of course, if there's any alarms within, and it's all pictorial, so that really helps the operator as well. Say, if there's oil, it's going to have the whole manual there, set within, so if you need to know what oil needs to go in there, the amount, everything comes up on the screen as well. Yeah, and there is also um, anti-collision 
uh, areas. I was int intrigued to ask Mike, one of the applications engineers, how do you go about programming something like this? Because the fear factor, if you're a company, you're, you're just operating maybe a two axis lathe at the moment, you've got the work for one of these, but you're thinking, you know, okay, how, how, am, I gonna, how am I gonna develop my strategies? Well, you program it in the same way I said, you program this side, and then you program this side and then the control will do everything in between to knit those two programs together but in amongst that there's also a collision um, area where it can go in and just check okay admittedly you have to be involved in that but it can, you can simulate what's going to happen yeah. in the cycle which is important you don't want to have a bang on one of these and ultimately you've got your parts catcher taking your part off and then you've got the uh, parts catcher there that takes the remnant off the overnight run so you mm. know and they're here and the engineering technology group um, really, with the amount of these that they must sell and they're bringing through, they know that this technology works for people. They know that generally when they sell them one, they sell them a second, third, fourth and fifth machine. So is this ready to go? So th this machine is ready to go. And talking to the guys here at uh, ETG, they are, you know, we often do promotions on machines, um, but with this type of technology, they're saying, once we get one in, we know we'll sell them a second, third and fourth. So they want to talk to people that are interested in, in going on a journey with this type of technology. Uh, because they're a privately owned company, they own this machine, they could support you in, the, in that journey as well. So you might find that actually you can have one of these machines and get used to it before you're really outlaying, uh, you know, a lot of funds. Yeah, and you've got the training and support all from the Engineering Technology Group.